two, check nine, check 27, check, aw shit, let's go to heaven. We are here right now, we are doing it, holy cow, welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. Coffee Hour with your host, me, Rob Cantrell. Oh, wow. That was a... Thank you. Uh, that was a, a ra- I love doing the intros. I love doing this podcast. I'm here uh, for the next uh, 45 minutes in your ear. Maybe more. We'll put some beats on there and have some fun and uh, talk about life, talk about cannabis, talk about herb. Talk about coffee, talk about eggs, talk about, talk about talking, <laughs> and I'm walking, uh, yeah, I did some, I did, I went, I've been writing my ass off, man, writing is, uh, when you really focus at it, it's all about completing it, like, everybody has ideas, and everybody writes, but, You know, you got to stick the landing. And that's the hardest part, is just like pulling it all together. So I'm working on these projects. So yesterday I was just like, dude, I've been landlocked, like literally like in my in my room uh, writing, like, you know, just going over. And a lot of it is like self-motivation and not yelling at myself in the head, like, but more like you could do this. Go, go. And then I get into the zone where you just kind of lose yourself in the material and that is a good moment you know and the same thing with this podcast like sometimes i'm like oh dang man i gotta get on the mic for 45 minutes i don't i didn't line up a guest i got a ton of shit to do on the home front um but i love getting up on the mic and there's a ton of stuff to talk about you know what I'm learning with this podcast is uh, what I have view of is the New York cannabis uh, scene. Right now, there's only one dispensary. You know, we did that at, at Housing Works, and the rest is like a lot of bodegas, a lot of bootleg uh, shit out there, um, which isn't. It's I, I just watched some videos in order to uh, get more. Of, up to date on what's happening in new york and i just know on the street that uh yeah a lot of bodegas a lot of like just non um head shops but they're selling herb but the quality is like it's not as good as the housing works i would just say the housing works was some of the best herb i need to get back there (laughs) some of the best herb and it was strong it was good it was healthy healthy to a cannabis consumer right now there's just a lot of funkiness out there um which i don't mind but as i get older and i've been you know smoking herb for a while i just know um i just know that it's you know cultivated outside i like the best cultivated without too much pollutants or just funkiness um and just a respect for the plant. You know, that's what I'm trying to bring out in this uh, podcast. And just keep it, at, you know, trying to keep on normalizing cannabis in society. And that's what's happening. The video I saw today is like, there's a lot of chaos because it is literally a $60 billion marketplace in the u.s and that's from the black market side like i don't know the numbers but that was the number i heard that for illicit for like illegal sales it's 60 billion um that's how much you know that's how many people smoke pot or use cannabis um which i uh, you know i think so many people put stuff in the background of their lives like you don't really talk to people about their drug use or um, I like to say cannabis is not a drug. Um, you know, it's more, I don't know, man. I kind of lean to almost um, medicine and a sacrament and, you know, just an alternative to alcohol and, um, 
and cigarettes. You know, I just grew up, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day and I I, I remember dipping tobacco in the fifth grade. I was stealing cigarettes in the fourth grade. You know, I was drinking and smoking uh, very early on. And um, and I just got burned out. I never was like super alcoholic. I ne- the thing that saved me, and I do have like a go, go, go. Um, I think I like adrenaline. I like popping off. I like partying, just like everybody. You know, you go through quiet, 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 and then you there's that sudden uh, burst of um, inspiration, you know. That's uh, what I've been thinking about, you know, is I've been thinking about so much stuff and so little, like literally just trying to um, meditate every day and live in the moment. And then what I've been, my meditation is I am love. That's my new thing. Uh, I've read this, I've just finished this meditation book. I can, and I, I worked like, I don't know. I just grabbed these books and I just power through them. Um, and I will say if you're struggling out there mentally or just getting your shit together and organized. And I remember just like rocking in a chair and I couldn't even hold on for like two or three minutes but now i'm doing i didn't i didn't i did like five minutes after my stretch and then i did 14 minutes on a 20 so i'm not perfect you know there was today i was i I was trying to hold on for 20 minutes doing meditation and i made it to minute 14 um sometimes you you know your bowels sometimes it's it you know it's just it's and I also notice is like right when you think you get to this point of super bliss. And the bliss is, you know, the only thing that's truly real is the moment. Because as as you go on in life, you know, and, and, and especially with the internet. And like I talked on the last episode, um, there's just so many people in the world. <laughs> there's so many names and relations i just sometimes i look at like apartment buildings or even buildings or just small towns and i'm on a street and there's like nine families on the street and everybody's got drama everybody's got drama in their head everybody got trauma in their head and i do think alcohol and cigarettes and um you know hard drugs and weed you know people you know are you know blocking out or trying to treat you know, trauma. Life is a life is a funny, funny riddle. <laughs> uh, but with the love meditation that I've been thinking about, like with all the names, like they, there's this thing in meditation where it's like, cons- like they're just mental concepts. So you could say this person or that person. The naming of things really begin the suffering when you start naming everything and attaching yourself to everything and i'm this this is this but really we all are just this moment we're all connected we've never not been connected the earth is completely connected you know all living things are pushing and working with each other and we're just going through this and we have to go through it And that's why I think, like, at the end of the day, it really is love, you know, in the sense, what is love? Love is selfless helping another, whether it's petting a cat, whether it's helping your brother with some bullshit that you got to help out with, or um, listening to somebody. You know, it's just, we're all going through this, and, you know, we all got to just uh, help each other. Be nice. Be nice, be nice, be nice. Because we all know what the end game is. Uh, in that way, I do think when you kill your ego to a point of understanding that all it is is this moment and that it's growing and it's coming and it's going, 
You know, it's like the seed popping out of the ground. You know, it's just quiet, quiet, quiet. But then all of a sudden there's a burst, much like the Big Bang. Like that's the idea of inspiration or creative ideas. And that's what meditation has helped me out with so much is learning to quiet, just don't force it, learning to quiet it. Like all the answers are there in nature, I believe. Um, But it takes a really quiet mind and a mind that can just block out the shit. Now, everything has gotten crazy with social media. I just, I demolished my Twitter. I took it down, man. I ain't rolling with Elon Musk. I don't give a shit. But I like electric cars. I'm, that's a name. That's an ego. That's me judging. I don't, it's, you know, sometimes I listen to these podcasts that are out there and I love them. I'm not hating on anything. But I, I, I do want to steer away from gossip. And I do think, a lot of this uh, social media's gossip and judgment and uh, ego, but that's the weird thing is, is that I'm in the ego business. I am in show business. <laughs> but the thing about it is, is acting's fun. Making something out of nothing is the dopest shit ever. Okay, you can go out and work for a job, but you creating something—that's what I get a fucking buzz from. And people that grow herb know this. That's, you know, making a seed, well, it's not nothing, but nature makes something out of nothing, something that you never even imagined, you know, and that's what I think life is, you know, I don't think we even know what the next thing is, or even know, we haven't even tapped into a fraction of what being a human is, and that lends me to, leads me to, um... You know, there's just so much violence, and I can't believe this fucking wars going on, and nuclear talk, and all this Jan Six, and you know, versus mentality. But these problems, I understand, like race problems and economic problems and struggles, and a lot of it. But when you when you quiet your mind, close, quiet, like really quiet it. All it is is this moment, you know? And then if you have a positive vibe in this moment, you can reach to the next moment um, that may lead you even more and more and more. I, I will say with my life, I, you know, I've seen things and done things um, that I never imagined that I would do. You know, I'm not billionaire. I'm not selling out. But, you know, I toured with Tracy Morgan. I, got, I was on a flight. Uh, uh, private jet zooming around the country, you know, doing shows. I've done, I toured with Mitch Hedberg. That was a mind blowing experience. You know, I've been in the room with a lot of like cool people that I looked up to, you know, I like, uh, and comedy always was cool to me. You know, um, uh, I loved Chris Rock. Eddie Murphy is the king, you know. I would say Eddie Murphy and Robin Williams were the two, for my childhood, were the two very significant specials that I saw that just blew me away. Um, and still is like a part of my DNA in some way or another. Um, but the, uh, I'll go back to this book that I just finished, but I'm still fucking with it. It's got, it's got, I got the I am mantra. It's got 52 mantras. It has a mantra for every day. A mantra, you know, you're just reprogramming your brain with all these thoughts. I mean, it's like working out at a gym, you know, you can, you can, you know, do your own. That's why, you know, it's like, it's easy for people to get influence over you. That's why I'm worried about like social media and stuff. Um, When they get ideas into your head, you know, just sound, you know, words and stuff like that. And mantra is like building that in yourself and it's all positive and kind and uh, loving. Um, What was I thinking about the I am love mantra? Um, This is from Deepak. Deepak Champa. <laughs> Somebody gave me the, this ch- Chopra. Sorry for my pronunciation. I know, I know, I'm off. Um, but you know, I always go my man Deepak. Um, but he has, at the end of this, I would say read the whole thing. He talks about 
the mind and body being connected in and nowadays it's not connected so you have to kind of and it goes with feeling the moment like you ever been under a lot of stress of like oh shit i'm broke oh shit how am i gonna pay that bills oh shit uh my aunt stabbed the cat oh and, you, and you're sitting there and oh and you're going through all this shit um but have you ever done that and then sat back and, and this is when i usually hit some cannabis and be like you know, everything's fucking all right. I'm still alive. My breath is here. The future is unknown. We're moving forward. I can get a little bit better. I can make this move. I can make that move. I could still dance. I could still eat a sandwich that I enjoy. You know, simple pleasures. That's what this fucking podcast is all about. A little bit of herb and a little bit of cannabis. Um, yeah, the, vibrating the silence. That's with these mantras. Like, once you get to a point where you can handle the silence, and then you can kind of, like, almost reprogram your brain into, like, some positive shit. Um, but, yeah, I highly recommend It's called Total Meditation. It's a brand-new book by Deepak, and it's fucking dope. I finished it, and I was going to send it off to somebody, but I'm holding on to it. Because I dig some of this shit. Uh, let's see here. I can't find that. No, no. Can I find that one? I am light and pure knowing. Okay. I know it was in here somewhere. It was a simple one. I like the the shorter the better. Then I have less to remember. But I don't know. I'll get back to that some other time. We could switch it up. I know sometimes spiritual talk, you know, some people are like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Um, And some people get it all the way. Uh, I'm just trying to put something out there positive and kind of talk it out in more of a normal tone. As well as, you know, weed and coffee. I got a great cup of coffee. I'm actually drinking. I got this fucking huge bag. But I thought it was the medium roast. But I got the dark roast. So I'm sipping it really slow. But it's Cafe Cubano. Um, This is Mayorga. 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 This is Cuban coffee. USDA organic. Costco big bag of it it's good i i actually am warming up to it i drank a little too much of it but it makes a good cup of coffee and it doesn't have that like i don't know starbucks dark roast is brutal this is has a little bit of a sweeter tone to it a little bit more earthy tone to it um you, you just can't drink a ton of it um, and I was, I, you know, I was writing for like three days, so I was drinking a ton of it. Mm. Uh, eggs, man. Eggs are going up. <laughs> I wrote this down. I went through an old notebook. Pro-life omelet is just a chicken sandwich. <laughs> so, you know, eggs, that's the trippy thing about eggs. You're like, oh my God, I'm eating like, this bird's period. <laughs> I'm eating like, you know, or this bird's baby, you know, pre-baby. They're so weird, but they're so good. Good omelet. And I, I love a good uh, egg white omelet. Oh, man. Um, but yolk it up, too. Sometimes you need the yellow. But a good fluffy omelet, how good is that? I haven't eaten today except for my smoothie, so I won't start talking about... Well, I do got some stuff I was thinking about for food. Uh, but I did watch the movie You People on Netflix. And there was a shout out to Sam J. Shout out to uh, Andrew Schultz. I know both of those cats. Um, it's great to see stand-ups that I know. It's inspiring. 
uh, to see them acting on such a big platform in such a big movie. Uh, Jonah Hill, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's hilarious. The char- all the the movie's written really, really well. The characters are done really well. There is some. I mean, it's kind of like they're talking about so many different issues that it gets a little jumbled. But on the whole, like in terms of a guy that likes films and wants to make movies and do more acting and shit like that. Like, uh, the music was dope. The casting was amazing. Uh, Jonah Hill fucking is an interesting cat. And he, you could tell, like, he's picking these, like, Moneyball. You can't fuck with Moneyball. You know, you could fuck with some of those other things or you say whatever. But, man, that was amazing. And then his performances are really good. Like, he really treats uh, filmmaking. Uh, yeah, he's just going for it. And that's what I say about this film. Like, he really went for it, and the whole cast went for it. Um, and it holds together, but it, uh, I, I was just in, you know, it's kind of like uh, who comes over for dinner. And talking the race subject, and then trying to be, you know, Eddie Murphy's just such a funny, funny, and good actor. Like, you know, he can handle just about anything at this point. But, uh, you know, they utilize him, but the only thing about Eddie's energy, I feel, it is a little bit more happy, it is a little bit more goofy, it is a little, and they do, and it does come out in that character, and I love that character, it's like a super militant uh, black character that is all about, uh, you know, he's down with Louis Farrakhan, and they're at the Jew, I mean, and they're having dinner with a Jewish couple, like, that, I mean, written out, it's awesome. Uh, do they stick the landing? Yeah, they stick the landing. Um, yeah, it's just, I like when artists go for it. Like, they go for it. It's good. I don't know, I think, but maybe the star power. Like, I looked up, the the budget was like $168 million. And the scenes are just like five or six people. You know, it's all pretty, you know... You know, I think that budget, you know, goes to Eddie and and and, uh, and the wonderful act- actress from Seinfeld, um, Julia Louise Dreyfus, who is also a DC girl uh, who comes from my hometown, and I always liked that. Like, I kind of knew that type of chick that hung out with my older brothers and older sisters. Like, I don't know her, but I just, uh, I, I do relate to her in some sense. Um, so I like, I like seeing her and I always, and she's always fucking funny. You can't fuck with the Elaine dance. That's like the Elaine dance. That's like I, well-written and then well-performed. It's, uh, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it, that was like, I rarely have time to sit down and ingest a whole movie. I did that in two sittings. Um, and it was just interesting. I just wrote it down. Uh, I thought Eddie's performance was great. I just like seeing him in movies. And um, and then interacting with actors. And they put him in something different and new. And uh, little, like it almost looked like a character like Charlie Murphy would be like, like Eddie's like. This dude was supposed to be so hard and intimidating. And Eddie's just definitely not somebody to be fucked with, like you could tell. But he also has like kind of a James Bond coolness to him that wasn't this guy's. Like he could play it and he did it and he understood the part and it was grounded. Uh, but yeah, it was dope. Shout out to all those guys. I'm not going to trash that movie. Uh, and Sam J. I love Sam J. I see her. Around. The weird thing is. I saw her just at a comedy show the other night, and she was just doing, a, like, she was just running around doing spots. Uh, we had a couple jokes. Uh, she was being funny. Yeah, but then I saw, I was like, oh, shit, man, she's fucking blowing up, man. She's on in a movie with Eddie Murphy. Uh, so she, I hope to, I'll try to get her on the podcast. But the only thing about, like, when people get really busy, I hate hitting them up, like, right out the bat. I know I should. I know I should be more assertive with uh showbiz 
But I also always love it when it's fucking organic, you know, when it's built on my terms. But maybe I should have asked her that night since I just ran into her. Um, that would have been dope. Uh, well, you know, I'll shoot my shot another time. Uh, somebody tell, uh, let's see. But I was, uh, getting back to food, man. <laughs> I wrote down another joke about Chef Bar RD. Like, man, Chef Bar RD, man, who, was he Italian? Who's Chef Bar RD, man? That guy's terrible. <laughs> uh, terrible cook. Terrible cook. I mean, it's good. I have to say, when I was young, I loved the shit out of it. There must be some type of super sugar in that shit that spikes you up. I used to make a SpaghettiOs sandwich. I would make SpaghettiOs, and they would have the meatballs. Who knows what the meatballs were made of, but I used to love them. So I would make a whole big pot of it, and then my mom would get these sub rolls. And I went through a phase where I was pouring the... Uh, I was pouring all the spaghettios and uh and with the with the, and then I wasn't even high. I think I was just born to be a stoner. I was born I always understood I think a lot of people are like this, you know. Creativity is just like it shouldn't be hallmarked as like this thing like only certain people can do. Like everybody can do it. Everybody's doing it all the time. Some people are, are into it more than others. And I think I was making SpaghettiO sandwiches. But life's about mixing it up. I saw this uh, box of Lucky Charm oatmeal. It was oatmeal mixed with Lucky Charms. It was like, that's like the evil, like Lucky Charms is up there with like Captain Crunch, like sugar wise, like those little marshmallows that are just sugar bombs. Um, and then the other things are sugary. And then, but you mix it up with the oatmeal. You know, I always like that. That's, I might get a box of that. I took a picture of it and posted it. Um, if you want to check out my Instagram, Rob88Cantrell. That's my Instagram. Um, that is... Uh, my main, that and YouTube, remember to subscribe to the Cannabis Coffee Hour YouTube. That's the main page I'm going to, you know, kind of start posting more stuff on and working and uh, tweaking and building up um, because I love doing this podcast. I love, dr I'm just drinking Cuban coffee. I got super, uh, smoked some great cannabis, um, just, uh, you know, right before this, and uh, and then I was like, "All right, let's do it. Let's knock it out." Um, but yeah, twenty-one states are legal. That's what I was like. The big hullabaloo uh, for New York City is like all these bodegas and all these illegal cannabis because it just kind of popped up. You know, just you know, it just kind of opened up real quick. And there's just so much, you know, $60 billion on the table. So it's just, it's hard to regulate. And that's what I was hearing about is like Canada, America needs to legalize cannabis, I believe, on a federal level. Like they just have to do that because there's so much on the money on the table. Now it's up to the states to regulate all this stuff and and it's too much, you know, it's too much. You can't, every street, you know, there's something that may have it. And then the product is whatever and whatever. And uh, yeah, it's just a little bonky. You know, it just bums me out that I wish they just would get a lot more legal dispensaries. Ones that are just a little bit quality control. Um, but I get... Some people are like, yo, Rob, what are you talking about? I'm running the black market. I, I said this the other night. I like the government. <laughs> I got no problem with the government. Nobody ever says that shit. I, got, I, I like America. I'm not nationalist or anything. I just like shit running. Running right. I mean, I'm not I'm saying it's running right, but in terms of chaos and mass confusion, when I start looking at these other countries crumbling and... What's going on with Russia where it's all these fucking oligarchs, these super billionaires, and then this one corrupt dude on top 
you're going to, you know, some co conspiracy cats are going to be like, no, Rob, that's going on in America. And I'm like, nah, everybody calls each other out. For, I mean, yeah, well, if there's enough money on the table, corruption haps, happens. But if there's enough checks and balances, and that's kind of how the system is all set up, is with checks and balances. I'm, I've am i always been pro-America. I've been pro-cop. Um, but I don't, you know, I'm anti-racism. I'm anti-police brutality. Um, I, I think it's very serious. And I've, I definitely, I think the white supremacy uh, subject needs to be brought in and talked about. Like, I get it. I get it. But at the other side, I also know shit goes down. I guess these are all these fucking, you know, super deep concepts that I'm thinking about, that I'm that I'm relating to and seeing out there. Um, but uh, but Canada legalized just four years ago on a federal level, and even them right now only have fifty seven percent legal cannabis sales the rest is underground and you know it's just a small little seed that you can grow just about anywhere um that's why thailand definitely interests me they were more like giving out cannabis for more personal growth you know for growing it at home so i also see that side of it too i don't know it's a it, it's a wild wild world out there as uh Cat Stevens once said, "Meow." <laughs> How did that dude get his name? Uh, Cat Stevens. That's that dude. I don't know. You know John Stevens? I don't think his name's John. What's his name? I don't know. That Cat Steven. <laughs> oh baby. Uh, yeah. So it's it. It is just a. Uh, weird thing to get your head around america legalizing but i do think it's, it'll be great for america you know i don't know because the future is unknown but i do know people just need to be kinder because there's just more stuff out there and i do know that like it's hard to be a super dick and do a bunch of evil and then keep on smoking cannabis because you're always thinking and uh, your brain will, like, make you go through those thoughts. And it'll make you kind of look at it from... I think it's ego death. Like, it definitely makes you, like, get to the get to a point where you kind of see... You just have to work through all that shit. Um, you can't turn a blind eye to it. It almost, like, po po makes you look at all the stuff that you're blocking. I think a lot of those psychedelics does that. And I think cannabis does that on a very low, not as much as DMT or mushrooms or acid or any of those things. I'm excited about psychedelics becoming more legal and being used as a tool for mental illness and depression. A lot of it, like that's what I was going to be talking about, I wanted to talk about was depression. And one thing that I heard about is depression is when you're thinking about the past and anxiety is when you're ruminating thinking about the future when you're worrying about the future the other one is like you're it's i don't know even ruminating you're getting that mind to like go in there and dig through all this shit and then the anxiety is like you project all these catastrophic weird uh, awful things that may or may not happen. Nobody knows. I do know, like, I've gotten everything that I've moved towards. Like, I wanted to go to a fun, goofy, cool college. I did that. Like, and I got through it. I wanted to go out west, and I did that. I wanted to be, and I remember not. I wanted to travel around the world. I was in this office job for like three years, sales. That's how I got to travel around Southeast Asia for six months. And for three years, I just sat there and I was like, I'm not this dude. This is not where I want to go. And I remember visioning surfing. And then it was like six months later, I was doing it. Now, stand-up was a little bit harder. 
Uh, cause it is such a hardcore, like very competitive, not competitive, but it's kind of a mind fuck and it takes forever. Um, I don't know for me to like get into not freaking out when I'm walking up stage. That was the main thing, but the freaking out is a little bit, I think I do have a little bit of the adrenaline junkie, uh, type mentality, like I do like uh stand i like that juice i like that nervousness it definitely makes me feel more alive um and when i'm not doing it but i see myself you know calming down if i have to if i have to i like kind of where i'm at now where it's like i'm getting to do podcasts i love this podcast like and subscribe on everything write it up this dude just rambles on forever. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Or, oh, I get this cat. This cat is my cat. Um, Yes, yes. Like and subscribe all day, every day to the podcast. Um, Yeah, uh, I guess another thing that I wanted to uh, talk about. <clears throat> I love the Grammys, uh, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. As you know, I was born in 72, so it's like... You know, hip hop feels like my best friend or one of my best friends, but it's changed and moved on and grown. And now it's like now I'm almost at the point where genres and that's a little bit of the naming in the category. Like, I just like vibes like and I do like funky beats. I like drums. I like the sensation of hearing the drums. Everybody. This is what part of music is and the drums that I was hearing in the beats, in the and rhyming is so much fun. Like I got to tell you, rapping uh, is so much fun. I love writing rhymes. I love rapping. I do need to go a little bit more towards that. Like, please check out my album, Caffeinated Dope Rhymes. I, like I was rapping for like ten years, not a ton. Not I was always stand up, stand up, stand up, and that's how I was making my living. Uh, sometimes better than others, uh, but. Sometimes, you know, bigger, sometimes, you know, I, I'm dipping up and around. Uh, I go up and I go down. And I, I, I will always go up and down. Everybody does. That's just the part of the gig. That's why you got to just let go of all the fear. And some, I will say sometimes the down, like I look back on some of the hardest struggles. I'm like, God damn, that was some dope shit, man. I was, you know, when I was living in San Francisco in 1999, I had to move into a hostel for like a year and a half. Um, but I was playing, I had a little jazz band, a uh, comedy jazz band called the Jazz Man Mega Band of Power, Love, and Cheap Thrills. I was doing shows. I was learning this new craft. I was meeting all these new friends. I got to hang out at the Fillmore. Um, I was smoking the best herb. I was traveling to L.A. and doing shows there, and I was enjoying it all, and all of it was an adrenaline rush. I was, you know, I had this, like, East Coast kind of, not boring, but, you know, secluded, you know, I would, grew up in D.C. and then Southern Virginia, um, and but the, to be able to go out there and not just visit, but, you know, get in the mix was the dopest thing ever, uh, so I, I, I love it. I've been checking, and speaking of, I think Big Bears in California, There, this is my favorite YouTube channel, you gotta check out, it's called Big Bear Bald Eagle Nest, it's literally these two magnificent United States bald eagle, not to get too nationalistic, but uh, I do like the bald eagle, it's a dope ass bird, it's beautiful. I like the yellow nose and the hook and how it stands and... It's uh, it looks, it just looks like a, it looks like a cool ass bird. Uh, the bald eagle is amazing, but there's this uh streaming video. It's going on right now. It's the best, and it's just all these eagles. It's this eagle nest, and it's over this beautiful lake in these woods. Oh my god! And you see their view, and they're just chilling up there. And sometimes you go on there at night, and they're feeding their little birds, and I don't know. That is dope. Um, that's what I've been, uh, checking out a lot of is streaming, uh, live bald eagles at Big Bear. Oh man, you got to check it out. That is the shit that in, uh, the Buddha flute. 
I've been pumping some Buddha flute. If you want to zen out, put on some Buddha flute. Um, that's just like, woo. A lot of stuff is tone, you know, vibration. That's why, you know, you know, with music, you, people hold it so sacred. And that's, I do hold it sacred and I do, but I don't want to, I never, I, I, I'm almost at the point where I never want to hold anything too sacred except for love, uh, which is always happening, which we can always turn to. But uh, in terms of, I guess, like idolizing anything, idolizing, you know, anything or giving the power up to somebody else to the point of it, you know, it brings you down. If you put somebody up high enough, it'll bring you down. Um, but uh, you could be inspired. That's what I kind of look for is cats that inspire me. I'll give it a shout out. The two cats, the two stand-up comedians, I have to say that I literally loved their style and thought they're the coolest thing ever was uh, Mitch Hedberg and Arge Barker. If somebody had to like, Rob, you got to pay money to go see a comedy show. And those guys aren't the, I mean, Arge is huge in Australia and he's had an amazing career. But, you know, there's all these super stadium cats now and everybody yelling about uh, Chappelle and Chris Rock, who I love all day, every day. But the cats that really tripped me out were Mitch and Arge because they were doing something a little bit different and it was silly and it was goofy. But there's room for everything. I mean, you could appreciate everything. That's me. I'm trying not to be judgmental on this podcast. Like I said that before, <laughs> all booted out. And then I hope I didn't trash you people, the movie, too much because I got friends on it and I know how hard it is to act. I didn't, tr it was just, uh, I thought it was, it hit. But, it, you know, towards the end, it was, I was like, uh, I'm hanging in there. Um, but as art, I thought it took a good risk. And uh, and it was bold and something new, you know. And it was something from old kind of, and it was important to talk about. I think it's just important for everybody to get together and just understand that we're all suffering. And life is suffering. And all you could do, there's no good or bad. That's the thing. That's the thing I wanted to touch on was like, you know, with all the religions and all the thing, what I've learned is there just is, you know, if something bad happens, well, that's, we have to deal with it, you know, and it has, it's always going on. If something good happens, you have to deal, it's like, even if it's not bad or good, it just is in the moment. Um, because we're all like slowly melting away, you know? So it's almost like you get to a point in the moment where you're you're just the viewer, you know? You're, you're just viewing of what's going on and then taking it in and then working with it. And then in that moment, you can kind of like see what the next thing to do if you're... You know, if it feels good. If it feels good. That's a good song. Walking. Wa widespread Panic. You know, I have a wide range of music, but uh, my favorite Widespread Panic jam band. I fuck with some jam bands. I've been listening to Jerry Garcia. They've been doing these awesome uh, live streams uh, from the Capitol Theater, which is this really cool old theater in Chester, New York. I still haven't been there. Um... But they have, uh, they just had Bob Weird play, just played there the other night with um, that other band, John Russo, which is a great uh, dead cover band that has more of a jazz influence. He's kind of more of a jazz type drummer, which is, uh, it, that was trippy. Just this, live streaming, I can't wait to start live streaming this joint. That's where we're going with the Cannabis Coffee Hour. I'm going to get a nice little studio. Make some dope coffee. Don't steal my idea. You probably will, but you got to follow through. It's hard. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, pumping mad Buddha flute. Uh, listen to a lot of Buddha flute. Listen to a lot of uh, Grateful Dead. A lot of reggae. A lot of reggae. Cherry My Baby. Check out Cherry My Baby by the Rastafarians. 
Shout out those cats. That's like, uh, and Mick Jagger covers that song. And his cover is really good. Can't fuck with Mick Jagger. I saw this other video of Mick Jagger playing for Obama. It was like in that room. Man, I, yeah, not to talk about politics, but I did like when Obama was in office in terms of like everybody cool showed up. He had Mick Jagger out there playing. Um, but I don't want to go into like, that's what bums me out about politics is like, it's such a versus mentality right now. And then with social media in the fame game, it's like, I know it's always been there and you're like, Rob, Paul, you know, the government sucks. These politicians, you can't, but I'm not a nihilist that way. I'm very much a realist and I grew up in DC and what I knew about these politicians is they're mostly nerds <laughs> and they work hard and it's public service. It's like lawyers and shit, older cats. That's why these presidents are so damn old um, because it's n the, I think people think the attention and being famous and being called the pa the president is sexy and cool and you can influence society in some ways. But at the same time, you know, those are really deep entrenched problems with a lot of work. And most of the time, the ego cats aren't the hard workers, you know. They're too busy looking in the mirror, looking at their likes and their subscribes. But it's all together now. But that's what I was also thinking. I have so many comedy peers that are now doing like political YouTube, like everybody is their own little, you know, media force, it seems like. But a lot of times it feels like to me, I'm like, dude, you were a comedian 10 years ago. Now all you do is rant about fucking PC politics and or you're a lot of cats went to Fox News for that check. Fox News, I don't know, man. Like it just seems like one big fucking like all the chicks on there are like porno hot. When the like I turned it on, it was all like these super blonde. You know they just get these old fucking <laughs> dudes checking it out just because the, the person on, and then they pledge all these weird fucking ideas. Uh, not weird because I do get the push and pull, you know. And sometimes super liberal stuff bums me out. I'm just a medium roast type of motherfucker. I like weed. Um, that's what weirded me out about you people was it leaned in on the cocaine shit. I don't know, man. But at the same time, you know, I've smoked enough herb to know that I never did coke. So it it's, it's something maybe I shouldn't talk on unless I did it. And I think my time has come and gone trying. I'm 50, you know, I'm up there, man. I ain't going to explode my heart on that shit. And people get hardcore addicted to it. And so much pain and trauma. But at the same time, living in the moment, I do know, like, that's sometimes when I think about, like, well, they got coked out and and they partied for three nights together, all these friends, you know, and maybe they were going to die anyway in a week. Like, at least they had that week to, <laughs> you know, experience that time together. Because I think sometimes... Sometimes partying, when you say partying, like, okay, you could, there's all kinds of definitions of that. Me, it's coffee and herb or um, meditation or stretching. I always say stretching is, uh, yeah, meditation is the new weed and stretching is the new cocaine as you get older. Um but I know, but I had a lot of friends that did coke, and and a lot of them had fun, and not can't. Some of them did do time. I did, had an. I was looking at an old newspaper clipping of a cat I knew that got busted for selling coke, and I was like, ah, shit. I knew that kid. Um, and this was like ten years ago, or whatever. You know, it's like. But I get. I I guess what I was trying to say is partying is like living in the moment when you do dance. And start drinking and loose like that is like this m group living in the moment where kind of the rules drop and people are trying to be their true selves. Now with that becomes confusing with you know with alcohol because I that's a, that's how I found it. 
But at the same time, I don't want to judge. And the same thing is like what I do, it wouldn't be good for everybody. And what they do isn't good for me. So it's like you just have to play your cards in the moment. And that's kind of like, that's where I kind of like go back and forth with um, the legalization of all drugs, you know. I'm more of a cannabis, mushrooms, I don't know, like if coke got legal, what would the ramifications be? I think we're, we're learning with cannabis, the ramifications, you know, there's a lot of good things, but there's also this black market thing, some crime, because there's so much fucking money on the table um, that it's kind of sketchy. Um, and I do think, uh, Coke brings out the ego, whereas like mushrooms and, um, cannabis kind of deaden it, but that's me. It may be the opposite for other people. You know, that some of these concepts, I'm like, what the fuck am I talking about? I just need to talk about, uh, some funky ass beats, but I do want to just get that energy out there. Because I see some dark clouds forming, and uh, Coke is one of them, fentanyl is one of them, and the, the amount of violence that's in hip-hop, the guns, like the perversion of guns in, I don't know, man. Um, but I also know things, that's the same thing with the cops and the guns. I do know, I think shit goes down, bottom line, shit goes down. And that's why I'm like, in the moment, you got to make a decision. Sometimes you you can't be so conformed that it's always this. Or something's going to come up in life that makes you debate that. That's what I've learned. Like, if it's, it's almost if you get too ritualized, you get shown the opposite. That's why I like to weave and kind of go back and forth, like... Especially in the stand-up world, like it was either you're going to be kind of an artsy uh, alternative comic or you're going to be this hardcore, uh, edgy club comic. And I never fit into any of them. I just wanted to do my own fucking thing. And that's, I think, the whole thing is like, that's what I've been learning as I got older. You really just got to practice your own art and stop and put almost the borders on and just go inward and work what's good for you and what's good for me i believe is is a little bit of cannabis and a little bit of coffee you know is something i could do into my 90s if i needed to <laughs> and still you know have fun and stay goofy and wondrous stay in the wondrous moment because that's it's life is so i mean i'm looking at this fucking plant how dope is this plant? It's breathing oxygen. It's green. This isn't even a weed plant. But just like, it's from nothing, man. It's from the earth. Like, how fucking amazing is it? We're, we're watching. I got a bald eagle stream going on right now. Like, how dope is that, that I could do that? And I do that from my own little computer. I don't have some super, like, silo NASA setup. In the 70s, to do any of that shit, to watch a fucking bald eagle bird, you couldn't watch that shit. Now I can do it in a click of a click, click. You know, as much as I hate social media and the internet, that's kind of the dope thing. And I'm making this on GarageBand. It's on my MacBook. Um, that's why I say, you know, removing good and bad. Like, you just have to move forward and work with what you work with in the moment. And, uh... Yeah, we got to go back, like, being love. That's what I was thinking about. Like, love is the moment. Like, the moment, if you go towards the love, it's like, there used to be this, like, uh, move. there used to be this uh, video game called Dragon Slayer, and it was like this cartoon thing. But you, you could only move the joystick. It was so before any, like, great, it was like a movie in a video game and i don't know i know i'm talking also but it, there was like this little flash that it would tell you where to go and it would only happen for a second and if you hit the flash it would go into a, a good movie if you didn't if you went to the wrong area or tried to go somewhere else it went into it was like one of those you know kill yourself read book things i don't know i forget what the, choose your own adventure books 
but that flash and that, that's how i see like if i'm ever in a confusing moment like i see that love like i'm like okay remove my ego remove the fear boom you know go that way um and living in the moment and catching it because man we're weed is getting legalized we're figuring out electric cars people got jetpacks but now this stupid war in russia like ah damn man you know really can you guys fucking evolve a little bit faster than that and i do think it's the will to kill you've got to remove it like i just see a lot of i see blood in people's eyes a lot you know and i get it it's the adrenaline rush you know it's that it's power people want to feel powerful or there's so much anger and trauma and everybody's just letting it loose on each other and you see it in these wars and you hear it in the music and you're like eh. but i you know i feel back back the fuck up off me you know but that's what i mean like in the moment you always want to choose love but at the same time you got to protect your neck as the wu-tang says i don't know i don't want to get I don't know where this podcast is going on this tip. I just was trying to put something out there positive and saying that, you know, love is selfless and that's the way to go in the moment. You know, you can go towards violence and all that, but it's, we're all going to die. So it's the harder way. It's the harder way and the easier way, but it's, it's the simpler way. But it's the longer way. But taking the long way home, that's the jam. You ever heard that song? By Super Tramp? Take the long way home? Isn't that the gig? All right. I'm out. That's it. Peace and love. Be good to each other. All that. Drink some coffee. I don't know. I don't want to preach. I just want to love. I'm out.